Hello friends, it's Carla, your online doctor with today's Live in 5. Today is Friday, May 29th. It is 5.05 p.m. Sorry for being a few minutes late. So we started talking yesterday about digestive enzymes. So let's discuss today the health benefits of them. Okay, the basic answer is simple. Without them, we could not process food. Okay, that's the basic reason why your body needs digestive enzymes. But here are some of the other reasons why many people should take supplemental digestive enzymes. Number one, it can help treat leaky gut and other conditions like celiac disease and other gut conditions by taking stress off of the gastrointestinal tract. Number two, it assists the body in breaking down difficult to digest proteins and sugars, including gluten, casein, which is in dairy, and lactose, also in milk. Those are big, big ones that people have problems with. And then, you know, there's the ones like I talked about in the, the starches that are in beans, things where people routinely have problems digesting them. Number three, it greatly improves the symptom of acid, symptoms of acid reflux and irritable bowel syndrome. Okay, that's how it's helped me, and we'll talk more about that next week. Number four, it enhances nutrition absorption and prevents nutritional deficiencies. Number five, it counteracts enzyme inhibitors. Enzyme inhibitors are naturally found in some foods like peanuts, wheat germ, egg whites, nuts, seeds, beans, and potatoes. And by inhibitors, basically what that does Hang on, I'm getting on some weird notification. Okay, um, inhibitors actually are in these foods and they block the enzymes from working properly. So when you have eat these foods, you may have impaired digestion. So as opposed to avoiding all of them, which is one option, um, the other option is to supplement with a digestive enzyme to kind of put more um, more enzymes into the mixture, literally, to Im improve your digestion. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Another area people often see improvement in when they add digestive enzymes is actually the relief of constipation, which goes along with irritable bowel, of course. But if you're one of those people who is not regular, clearly it's probably your diet Maybe exercise will help, more water, all the things they talk about, but adding digestive enzymes may actually be the thing you're missing. <clears throat> so what are natural sources of digestive enzymes? Many raw plants, such as raw fruits and vegetables, contain enzymes that aid in your digestion. So for example, pineapple, papaya, and apples contain beneficial enzymes, but when they're grown in soil that is depleted, of nutrients, which is very common these days, or if they are highly processed. Okay, you take a, a healthy food and you, 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 you know, put it into something, like I said, a processed baked good, okay, an apple pie that's made, you know, by a, not homemade, um, you've totally destroyed the benefit of the apples and you've depleted the digestive enzymes, okay? So, not what you're really trying to do. So just because a food contains digestive enzymes doesn't mean it's still there in the form that you're eating it. Now, digestive enzyme supplements are derived mostly from three sources. Number one, there are fruit sources. So like I said, pineapple or papaya um, have these enzymes and you can, they can extract those enzymes out of the fruit and make supplements. So bromelain, is an enzyme in pineapple that breaks down a broad spectrum of proteins, has anti-inflammatory properties, and can actually withstand acid and base pH. So it's really good to go from stomach to the first part of your intestines, which turns basic, and can still remain functional. Now, papain is the enzyme in papaya that can break down small and large proteins. So these are really important ones, and they are sourced from fruit and can be added to supplements. Now, granted, if you eat the fruit, you can also get the benefits, but um, I mean, there's only so much papaya and pineapple you're gonna eat in a day, right? So you can't be doing that three meals a day. 
Now there are also animal sources, including pancreatin, which is sourced from ox or pig. Um, again, there are many digestive enzyme supplements that if they say they're vegan or vegetarian, they don't, they don't contain sources that are from an animal. Um, the Young Living supplements that I take, they have four. Two of them are animal-based and two of them are vegetarian, vegan. So that's the first question I ask somebody. If you choose not to eat animal-based products based on diet or religious preference or whatever else, then those two are not for you and these two are the ones we're going to look into, okay? And lastly, there's plant sources derived from probiotics, yeast, and fungus, okay? So there are a lot of ways to get these um, enzymes naturally or naturally derived in a supplement. Now, if you see a label that says natural digestive enzymes, that is what they mean. They're derived from the plants or animals. They're not synthetically made. Now, supplements in this category um, category often have many other ingredients which can make it hard to know what is right for you okay it becomes like opening up Pandora's box I don't know what to do like there's just so much coming out I have no idea what to what to choose so this will likely look different for each person based on your diet and what your body doesn't digest well so and it may even be different for people in your own house eating the same diet. Remember, we each have our own chemistry that goes on. So what works for me may not work for my daughter or my husband. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, again, if you are a vegetarian or vegan or have religious dietary preferences, you're going to want to pick the fruit or plant-derived um, supplements as your first step. Um, pancreatin actually, even though it can be derived from animals, can also be derived from a fermented fungus called Aspergillus niger. And so vegans can actually get that benefit. They just have to know where the product, where that particular enzyme is sourced. Now, many supplements contain complementary herbs and spices that have their own benefits, but may actually work synergistically with the enzymes. So we're going to talk more about this next week because I can help you choose ones that are going to be beneficial to you. I have most experience, of course, with the enzymes that I take. Um, I take two of the different ones from Young Living. So, you know, I can give you guidance in that area. But if you talk about your specific, and I mean, think about it. A lot of people, I tell them, keep a food diary. Write down which foods are agreeing with you, aggravating you, which ones, you know, when you have... When you're constipated, when you have gas, when you have acid reflux, when you're bloating, all of that thing to keep track of what might be causing your symptoms so that you can figure out what enzymes you might be missing or needing extra of. So we're going to talk more about this on Monday, who needs digestive enzymes, and again, recommendations of what you should be using. It is Friday. It is almost 5.15. Wow. It's actually been sunny here in South Florida. Everything is turning really green from all the water. I hope it's beautiful where you are. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you guys on Monday for another Live in 5.